a vast blue expanse to life on Earth. And there's no better animal to represent the story of the ocean with all its splendor and uncertainty than the killer whale, or as it's scientifically known, the Orsinus orca. The orca lives in every corner of the ocean, from the Arctic to the Atlantic, the Southern to the Indian, to the mighty Pacific and beyond. This whale's story is the ocean's story, and it is one we all share. and I'm so honored to introduce to you these intriguing and majestic animals. There is nothing like seeing a killer whale close and learning more about them and their natural behaviors. We hope that this orca encounter will help you better understand these magnificent creatures and all that they represent. are quite different than those near Costa Rica. In fact, there are at least 10 types or ecotypes of killer whales. An ecotype describes the differences between killer whale size, physical form, prey, social structure, and habitat. As you can see, the differences are subtle, but noticeable when compared side by side. Orcas are adapted perfectly to their environments. And even the whale's black and white coloration has a purpose. It camouflages the outline of their bodies in the water, making it easier for them to surprise and catch their prey. When viewed from above, the black of the whale blends in with the dark depths of the ocean. When viewed from below, the orca's white bellies match the brighter surface of the water, blending with the light above, giving them the perfect camouflage. Killer whales truly are a natural wonder, and Ulysses here is going to help me show you some of their physical characteristics. Their ball hole is perfectly designed for taking a quick breath of air at the surface of the water. Even the location of their eyes works their advantage. It appears as if his eyes are located in the white patch, but that's just a visual distraction. His eyes are actually located just before the white patch, camouflaged from thrashing prey. The fin on top of the wheel is called the dorsal fin, and it's mainly used for stabilizing them as they swim and regulates their body temperature.
The flippers on either side of the wheel are called the pectoral flippers and are used for stopping and steering. The pectoral flippers have five bony digits inside of them, just like the human hand. The lobes on either side of the tail are called the flukes. Now the tail flukes are the engine of the killer whale, propelling them up to speeds of 30 miles per hour. And they swim the fastest and use the most power when propelling their nearly 10,000 pound bodies all the way up and out of the water. Killer whales are highly social animals with a well-defined social structure. An orca pod is always led by a female. Though just half the size of her male counterpart, she is in charge. It's all about attitude, not size. Because they live and work as a group, orcas need to communicate with sounds and body language. Orcas use clicks for echolocation or navigation. <laughs> Whistles to socialize in the pond. And calls for group coordination and hunting. development studies here at SeaWorld show that early on calves learn vocalization from their mothers but as they grow they learn from others close to them as well this is a bottlenose dolphin call that Shuka learned and even taught other killer whales here at SeaWorld in fact orcas are the largest members of the dolphin family Whales here and in the wild use vocalization to communicate all the time. Just like all animals, killer whales use body language as a form of communication. They use pectoral slaps to show dominance and to get noticed. For example, a mother may peck slap to get the attention of her calf. Tail flaps are another form of communication that killer whales use in the wild. Pursue and catch their prey. 
every day they cooperate to survive in the wild oceans of the world. The orca's hunting techniques are as varied as the whales themselves. Norwegian killer whales will circle herring, herding them together. The whales use sounds to coordinate with each other and to disorient the herring. With the fish confused and contained, the whales stun them with their powerful tail flukes, making for an easy meal. these waves splashing in front of you, but you cannot imagine the amount of water in this place until you experience it firsthand. Luckily, I have some brave volunteers who are ready to take on the 55 degree salt water. Let's give them a warm San Diego welcome. Come on down, you guys. All right, take a seat right here. There you go. All right, you guys are ready to roll. It looks like one of our largest wheels is coming on out to give you guys a big splash. Are you ready? So it is no wonder that they eat all kinds of prey, including other whales. The blue whale you see on the screen behind me is the largest animal on planet Earth. It is about five times as long and 50 times as large as a killer whale. So how does a killer whale this size eat a whale that size? Well, it's all possible because killer whales are the ultimate team players. In this example, we see the larger male orca surround a sperm whale forming a perimeter, while the females continue to drive the whale forward until it reaches exhaustion. The calves then move in to join the adults in the group. Whatever their prey, killer whales always cooperate and hunt together, making them a highly successful predator. part of everyday life for killer whales. It's how they teach their young to hunt and practice their skills as they grow. Killer whales spend a lot of time interacting and showing their playful side in the wild and right here at SeaWorld. Porpoising is when a whale swims fast to the surface, breaking out of the water just briefly. You'll see them do this one catching a ride in the wake of a boat or 
while surfing away. Killer whales love to be touched and will rub their bellies on rocks when they can. You'll see Kalia doing this here, just like the whales in British Columbia. You'll even see whales imitate each other in the wild. We see this here at SeaWorld all of the time. The whales are constantly mimicking and learning from each other. Playful behavior has a purpose. A tail up is used in hunting to stun fish. But today, these whales might just be stunning all of you. body parts, like their flukes for inspection, so we're able to draw blood for tests. slide out on the scale so we can monitor their growth patterns and keep an accurate record of their weight, all which tells us more about how they're staying healthy. We can even ask our whales to give us a breast sample from their blowhole, all because of the trusting relationships we build here at SeaWorld day after day. take this opportunity to introduce you to a very special whale. He's one of our largest whales, weighing over 10,000 pounds, and he's coming out to say, hello, this is Ulysses. Ulysses is 45 years old, and he's one of our more athletic whales. Now, we hope that Ulysses inspires you to think more about conservation in our global oceans and ways you can help their wild counterparts. We challenge our whales every single day to learn something new, to engage and stimulate their minds. Diet, exercise, and of course play keeps our whales in great shape. The whales here at SeaWorld have helped killer whales in the wild by participating in many research studies. One ongoing study monitors the whale's heart rate and breathing to understand how marine noise pollution from ship engines and other sources affect wild populations. In another study, scientists from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, took measurements of the killer whales living here, including pregnant whales. By comparing these measurements with drone footage of killer whales in the wild, scientists are able to monitor the wild population's nutritional and reproductive states. 
other research has been done here at SeaWorld on the mother whale's milk composition. This research will help create an effective model to understand how toxins in the ocean impact wild killer whales and their milk supply. What we learn from the whales in our care every day is actively helping whales in the wild survive. And just by being here today, you've supported our rescue, research, and conservation efforts all around the world. If we work together, like the killer whale, we can protect the future of the Orsinus Orca and this beautiful planet that we all share.